Alrighty ho! Today we're gonna get started with some Starship Super things to discuss. And then we'll debrief Monday's Anasis 2 mission, get an update on Tom Cruise's cruise to space, as well as other missions to come, and then finish with today's honorable mention. Okay? I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. For the past several weeks, Starship SN5 has been a giant tease, and she won't stop. On Friday, SpaceX engineers pressurized the tanks with ambient gas before quickly aborting the test. A second attempt was then made on July 20th for a couple hours, but again with no frost and no joy. Two more tests on the 21st and 22nd were aborted before they began, and there was a test scheduled for today, but it too was just canceled. When SpaceX does get around to testing the vessel, God only knows what they're planning to do, we'll just have to think positively that it's a static fire, and that's probably what it's gonna be. And if in the end we're left disappointed, well then at least we had a moment of naive happiness. But there is a notum filed with the FAA that is clearing the airspace for static fire between two days ago and August 5th. So no matter the test they do perform, at least you can keep looking forward to the future. Because if SN5 does light up in the next several days, expect to see the first 150 meter hop of a Starship test prototype shortly after. Elon tweeted on Tuesday that SpaceX will attempt to fly her later this week, Obviously, that's no longer the reality for whatever reason, but we should expect more closure dates to appear for next week, probably by the end of the day. If SpaceX streams it, I'll be sure to cover it, but regardless, you can catch it on Lab Padre's channel as well. SN6 is still in the mid-bay. It's unknown at the moment what SpaceX still plans on doing with her. Maybe she'll be used as a backup in case something goes not normally with SN5. But what we do know is that SN8 is definitely under construction. That's because an SN8 common bulkhead that separates the methane from the LOX was outside and clearly labeled such. An article from NASA's Spaceflight apparently confirmed through their sources that SN8 is being made out of the 304L stainless steel as we expected, although Elon said they are rapidly changing alloy constituents and forming methods so transitional names like 304L will become more of an approximation. SN8 will receive a fairing, or nose cone, Maybe this one that was stacked last week, but man, have they been pumping out a lot of nose cones lately. It's like every other day a new one is found. But the vehicle will also receive three Raptor engines to allow for higher flight altitudes, perhaps to 20 clicks. A second Raptor was delivered to the site on Wednesday afternoon. And finally, it will also receive aero surfaces or fins, but probably not these. These are the old MK1 fins that have just been installed in front of a future restaurant as a pretty sweet pavilion. I wonder if they have any fins to spare. I could personally use a Starship patio. This is all part of a new dining slash viewing area that's going up. Well, that's the word on the street anyway, a place for Elon to party like a rocket star, or maybe just a place for VIPs and the like to hang out during launches. Some have speculated that this structure here is part of a launch tower arm, but others are thinking it will be part of this new viewing area. I'm inclined to agree with the latter at the moment. Seems a little early to be talking about crew arms, but hey, what do I know? Nothing, that's what. A couple weeks ago, locals shared images of a new wooden structure that might actually be a bandstand for the area. What kind of band exactly? I don't know, my money, or lack thereof, is on a mariachi band. The high bay for the super heavy booster is still growing, construction teams are on the second tier meow, and its pad is growing out of the ground as well. They must be sufficiently watering it. That's a dumb botany joke. Unless we forget, all this effort going on down there in the Texas heat is so life can be brought to Mars. Now let's move on and debrief Monday's Anasis 2 mission. The evening before launch, SpaceX captured an image of the comet Neowise photobombing their Falcon 9 rocket on the Slick 40 pad. Kind of rude of the ice asteroid, but really cool. Anyway, the following day, the South Korean payload was launched into orbit, where it successfully deployed 32 minutes later. The booster was extremely notable in that not only was it the same booster that launched Bob and Doug to the space station 51 days prior, but that 51 days set a new turnaround record for rocket reuse taking the title from the shuttle Atlantis, which had a turnaround record of 54 days. Still, a long way to go, says Elon. Reuse only matters to the degree that it's rapid and complete. The booster was caught on the drone ship just read the instructions in the Atlantic. I mean, I bet you my empty wallet that if you took a tape measure to those legs, you'd find it was a near perfect dead center bullseye. Look at that. Good job, booster. It arrived at the port this morning, and if things couldn't get any better, watch out. SpaceX also caught both fairing halves for the first time in the nets of mystery and mischief. Actually pronounced mystery and mischief. I never caught that before. That's me. I'm always late to the party. Mmm, parachutes. 
And while we're on the topic of objects that fly, let's talk about Tom Cruise. Yesterday, Variety released a story divulging that Universal Pictures is in negotiations to snatch up Tom Cruise's future space film, the first to be shot in real space. Yeah, space is real, but production won't be cheap. 200 million is the most current optimistic projection, landing Cruise a modest 30 to $60 million for his part as an actor, producer, and professional pretender that at least doesn't have to fake floating in space. Of course, this story is significant to this show because as I said months ago, Tom Cruise is planning on doing the trip to the space station for his movie in a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. However, no script exists at the moment, but I don't care. Sign me up for ticks to this film. It's Tom Cruise in space. If he gets a hoot out of jumping on couches, think of how he's going to act in zero G. Man, I wouldn't miss that for the world. Especially, get this, since he's going to be at least 60 years old by the time he gets up there. <laughs> like Tom himself, time flies. But while we're talking about the space station, I might as well mention that our Demo 2 boys are still at it up there. Yesterday, NASA tweeted a video of them performing habitability assessment of the Crew Dragon capsule they arrived in, which included opening and closing the hatch, operating the waste system, gross, and moving cargo back into the vehicle. Yay, space chores. They will be coming home for a splashdown on August 2nd. Also, NASA opened up media accreditation for the Crew-1 mission, the first operational flight of the Crew Dragon spacecraft, and one with four souls on board. It is expected to launch no earlier than late September. But the next launch is Starlink 9, the 10th batch of SpaceX's Constellation satellites. That's scheduled to happen on Wednesday of next week at a very disgusting time of 4.26 a.m. Eastern. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. The United States Space Force unveiled their new logo and motto to the public this week. Semper Supra means always above, which I guess is accurate so long as you're not doing a handstand. And it represents our role in establishing, maintaining, and preserving U.S. freedom of operations in space domain, says the branch. The Delta Wing was first used by Starfleet and other space organizations as early as 1961, and in the center is the Star Polaris. It symbolizes how the core values guide the Space Force mission. The black area embodies the vast darkness of deep space. Oh, and they forgot to add that Polaris is at the center because it guides. It's the North Star, people. Get out of the way, you fancy triangle. Well, that's all the SpaceX news I have for you today, but I'd like to thank all my eccentric members and patrons who support the channel so I can get these videos to all of you. If you'd like to do the same thing and receive access to more SpaceX news in your week and other nerdy things, check out the description below for the relevant links. And of course, while you're down there, be sure to support local SpaceX photographers for the images they provide for all of us. Have a nominal weekend, and until the next one, Godspeed.